What another beautiful winter's day. Well, hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am here on the Fraser River with my absolutely amazing wife, Dana. Hello. We are here looking for usually gold, but today we're looking for a gemstone. The elusive Fraser River Jade. Wish us luck and I hope you enjoy. My claim runs for about a you know, half kilometer or so down the river this way and we are going to be uh, walking the gravel bars and digging into the gravel bars and seeing if we can find some of the Fraser River Jade. Now you guys might be uh, familiar with Jade, everyone knows Jade, but most people think of Jade as some of the Asian Jades or Jades from Myanmar, the really green, lime green see-through stuff. Fraser River Jade not normally like that. Normally the Fraser River Jade is much darker, more of a forest green. Uh, jade can run anywhere from absolute white all the way to absolute black and every green in between. And uh, the stuff on the Fraser River here is a lot more modeled than the stuff you would see big carvings made, of ch made in China and stuff like that. Uh, but we still have beautiful Jade here on the Fraser River and our goal today is to find some. So Dana and I are going to start walking that way doing a grid along the bars and seeing what we can find. And Dana says, hey there, that looks like Jade. So Let's have a look. Okay, so some of the things that we're gonna be looking for along the way here, Dana. Uh, I don't see any right in front of us right now. Jade is a very, very, very hard rock. So as it tumbles down the Fraser River, it actually polishes its surface. The surface of Jade is typically very shiny. It's also an extremely hard and tough rock, so it doesn't abrade away very easily. And another neat factor of it is because it's so dense, lichens and mosses don't typically grow on its surface because they have nothing to uh, root down into, grab onto. So we're looking for shiny rocks. Uh, the model jade here is kind of a yellow oxidized look on the surface. The black nephrite, the black jade, is a uh, very, very shiny black. And, well, the green is just bright green. Let's go find some, show you guys what it looks like. So here is our first possibility. There are three types of rocks on the Fraser that we may think, uh, think that we found jade. Serpentine, which is a sort of a precursor to jade, which is green, often green, translucent like jade, but very soft. There's also an ultra mafic green and black stone that looks like black or green jade, but it's not translucent. We can't really tell that one until we cut a slab out of it and see if it'll pass light. And then there is the jade. This here, I'm believing, is a piece of black nephrite. Jade and nephrite are the same thing. Nephrite is the chemical sort of name for jade, the mineral name for jade. This, I believe, is a piece of black nephrite. Very, very dark. It doesn't really show green much. There's a little bit of green to it, but not much. But there, I think, is our first piece of jade. Though, it could also be that ultramafic rock. Is this the ultra? Ooh, ooh, as Dana brings one in too. Ah, that has a bit more look of jade than that one. Either of those could be black nephrite or ultramafic rocks. We won't be able to tell until we take a slice out of it and see if it'll pass light. But it has that white on it, that's fine? Yep, uh, a lot of jade will have white, uh, white quartz seams running through it, that's no problem. Now there's a nice piece. This is one of the ones that really shows the green, like absolute bright green. The surface looks a little different than I would expect. So this is one that could possibly be serpentine, not jade. I can't really tell until I take a fresh slab of it and try to scratch it with a certain hardness of metal that will scratch serpentine but won't scratch jade. So it's a bit big. I might try to break that in two or something like that and see if I can get it up there. But this is definitely one for us to take back to test because if that's jade, if it's hard enough to be jade, that is a beautiful, beautiful rock. 
and you can definitely see from the, some of the cracks on it that it is translucent. I like that one. And right there looks to be a piece of black nephrite right beside the green jade. This one has a bit more of a green tinge to it. Almost sure that's a piece of that black nephrite. A little bit too big. I want smaller pieces to carry out. Oh, like that. How about that one? Nice small piece of black nephrite. You can even see that it's sort of got a bit of a green tinge to some of it. And you can see how that it's slightly translucent in some areas. Pick it up later. Another thing about jade is it is much, much, much heavier than other rocks because it's so dense. <laughs> I can carry that to the top of the hill. We'll get pick it up at the quad from there. <laughs> See another piece of black jade over there. Black nephrite. We're looking for the green stuff though. We will take some of the black with us. So there is this rock on the Fraser I call Model Jade. Uh, this is not a good sample of it, but this was just a little sample I could break for you. It's yellow or beige on the surface, but if you go inside of it, if you break it, that beige, yellow beige is only about two or three millimeters thick on the outside, and then it turns this green mottled color inside, which if you cut a slab of that, is translucent. This is what we call modeled jade. This is not a great example of it. I'm not even gonna take this one, uh, but I am looking for better examples of modeled jade to take with us. And when we cut this stuff, it is beautiful inside. I love the uh, pockets of jade intertwined with another material. Anyhow, let's find a good one. Look at that one. Oh, that is a funny shiny color, isn't it? with funny pink inclusions in it. I don't know what it is, but yeah. And that is definitely one of those ultramafic rocks. Because it's got this brown in it? No, you can just, it's hard to explain what, the, what I see in the surface, but on the jade, it's almost like you can see a tenth of a millimeter through the surface. Okay. Where this one, I can see it's just opaque. That could be something. That one there? Yeah. Oh, and that one over there. Oh, let's go have a look at a few of these. Dana just found a beautiful rock. This guy here, hard to tell from the surface what it actually is, but I believe it is a piece of that model jade that is very, very dark. And I can actually see through the surface in some areas that it's green underneath. This would be one to take home, cut and see what we can see. We won't be able to tell until we cut a slab out of the middle, it passes light, and it won't get scraped. Then we know it's jade. Nice work, Dane. These rocks are you want to carry that up to the ATV? Yeah, okay. Like Fist size ones. Yes, palm, palm, palm size rocks. Yeah. Go, Dane, go. So video's sake, it may look like we're finding lots of these, but we've actually been going for an hour or more already. Uh, they're few and far between. It takes a, lot of a long time to find them. Uh, though, of course, I only pull out my camera when I have something to show you. But we'll keep looking. There will be something down there. Here's another piece of that model Jade. Nice small one, nice palm-sized one. Again, it's not the quality I want. I can tell the quality I want because you see the green lines up on the surface but that's still that same stuff. Might as well throw it in the backpack. So some of these rocks that look somewhat right, if you hit them with a hammer and you can crack a corner off, well, the fact that you can crack a corner off probably means it's not jade because jade is so tough, but you can also see that from the inside, it's not translucent, it's all grainy. This is an ultramafic rock. And Dana just brought up a nice piece of black nephrite. The black, the black jade here isn't completely black. It has a green tinge to it. It's a very, very, very dark green but a beautiful, beautiful sort of, oh, I wanna say forest green. It's even darker than forest green. But there's black, black nephrite. That's a nice size one to take with us. Into my backpack. It has variations that you can. Oh yeah, when it's wet, you can really see the green. Nice rock, Dane. Well done.
Awesome. Oh, you where, where's your face? It. Where's the sun? There we go. Well done. In my backpack it goes. So walking this gravel bar looking for jade, I kind of take three big steps forward. I stop and then I start looking around at the gravels on the gravel bar, looking for the telltale signs of what I know Fraser River jade looks like. One thing about jade is that there's so many different kinds and so many different textures that every jade at every different place looks different. And placer jade like this looks way, way different than hard rock jade. Jade mine from a quarry. I don't see any here. Three more steps. Here's a piece of that model jade with more of the striations, the green striations up onto the surface. I find the green striations, once you've cut it, are the most transparent part of the whole stone. So there's a nice one. It's kind of cracked up. Usually you don't see that on uh, the slicks from the Fraser River, but you really see some of it there. There's a nice rock. We'll get Dana to throw that one in my backpack. It's funny how when you actually see one, it calls you from such a distance. You can see it from such a distance, how shiny it is compared to the dull, ugly rocks all around it. You see all these dull rocks everywhere and then all of a sudden there's a beacon begging you to come look at it. That is a beautiful piece of jade. My backpack's kind of full. I'll carry that one back to the quad. Nice. Again, it's funny how when you find it, oh boy, do you know it. I saw that one from a distance. It's got that yellow surface on of the oxidized jade, but it's shiny. It means it's hard. It's buried. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, and you can hear it. Okay. Whew and you can hear it. Here's something else I should point out for jade. Jade, because of how dense and hard it is, it pings when you hit it rather than thuds. Here, let me turn the microphone around. Okay, so when you hit a regular rock, big thudding sound. When you hit jade, high pitch ping. Ping, ping, ping. Thud, thud, thud. You get used to that sound, the pinging sound when you hit jade. There's a nice, Long skinny piece. If we started cutting that off, it would be green inside. Here's another one. Though I do worry on some of these that are dull on the surface that possibly that's modeled serpentine and not modeled jade. So serpentine is the precursor to jade. Serpentine that gets baked under the right pressure turns into jade. And this stuff just might not have been baked enough or something like that. And it's all dull on the surface, meaning that it's softer. Though you get these little spots wet and there's still a beautiful jade inside. So I'll take that one. We'll cut the slab out and once we've cut the slab into the sort of the, the virgin material inside, not the oxidized stuff, we can try to scratch it and see if it scratches. That will tell us for sure. Into the backpack it goes and I'll keep looking. Now someone out there in the know who, uh, you know, knows how to hunt for jade is yelling at me right now through the camera saying, Dan, you should have a magnet with you. Magnets will tell you the difference between serpentine and jade. It is possible they will, though the information that I found when searching uh, the internet and whatnot for how to identify jade had conflicting results. Uh, a buddy of mine who is into gem collecting, uh, he told me that serpentine will attract a magnet, jade will not. When I went and did some research, I found a university paper on the magnetism of stones and they had all the different types of stones, like everything listed, including multiple different types of jade and all the jades were magnetic. So now I don't know if a magnet will or will not get attracted to jade or will or will not get attracted to serpentine. It is possible because there's so many different types of jade and so many different types of serpentine that it will be attracted to some of both. I don't know the actual answer to this, so I will not be able to use a magnet to make that determination. 
I have my own ways. Hardness, translucency, the pinginess, the heaviness, other things will tell me whether or not it's jade. Dana's bringing me a rock. Find something there, Dane? Ooh, that looks like model jade. For the backpack? Let's see what we got in hand, in hand first. Ooh, cool. Doesn't it have a ring of green? It's got a ring of green. Ah, let's cut it and find out for sure. Throw it in the backpack. Well done. Okay. So as I was talking to Dana, I looked over and said, hey, there's a piece of mutton fat jade. This white rock is not quartz. This is actually a form of jade known as mutton fat jade. And strangely enough, mutton fat jade isn't really jade at all. Uh, it's a different uh, mineral altogether. It's just called mutton fat jade. It is hard like jade. It carves like jade. It's translucent like jade. It is white or cream color. It is not green. That there, if it was smaller, I would take with me. Uh, maybe I'll bring over the feather and wedges and break off a chunk of this so we can uh, take a chunk of mutton fat home too. Because mutton fat is actually, you know, sought after by some stone carvers because it is so dense, so hard, and carves so easily. Beautiful chunk of mutton fat. It does have little specks of green. It, it actually... Crystals. It's got inclusions. These little pockets that have worn away uh, will have kyanite or a type of jade in the pockets. I think it's usually kyanite, uh, which is a blue, a blue stone. Uh, and when you cut it, they haven't weathered away like they have on the surface. And uh, you can actually see it inside. Oh yeah, totally see the green. That might be a piece of jade inside the mutton fat. Nice. You want to carry that out for us, Dane? Okay. Is it heavy like jade? <laughs> yes, it's very heavy like jade. <laughs> now there's the most bizarre piece of the day <laughs> so far. I don't know if that's jade or not. Uh, this one's going to come home with us to cut and test because I can't tell you one way or the other. That's a neat looking rock though. So I dug out this rock. It was mostly buried right down there. And I dug it out because it just didn't look quite right. And then I, you know, licked my thumb. Let's do it again. And wiped the surface. Oh yeah, that's jade. It's not shiny like I normally think of as jade, so maybe it's serpentine, not jade, but that's definitely worth taking back, cutting and testing. As you may have noticed, I'm saying with a lot of these things, I think they're jade or it's possible. I won't know on pretty much any of them until I've taken them back and actually gone through the proper testing of jade. Whew. That's a nice rock. Oh. Now let's see if I can call Dana back to put it in my backpack for me. She says we'll get it on the way back. I'll put it up where we can see it. So I was just about to take this rock and put it up on that one when I sort of just scanned the bar a little bit and I said, whoo, right there. Do you see it? Let's see if I can point to it properly. Uh, ooh, right there, just shiny, shiny, shiny black. There's a piece of black nephrite right there. Nice big one, too big for us to carry out of here. Anyhow, back to searching. <laughs> there we are. That's the one I just saw. Possibly one of the nicer pieces of black nephrite. It's actually not even black nephrite. It's just a very, very, very dark green. But that would be a hard one to take all the way back. <laughs> So as we walk the bar, Dana and I are doing a grid pattern. She's staying down low, I'm staying sort of halfway up. And then on the way back, we're gonna go halfway in between where we are now so that we can cover most of the bar in kind of a grid pattern. And we know that uh, we haven't sort of missed big swaths of it. Ah, it's very hard walking on this. All these rocks are so unstable and loose. I definitely found more good stuff when I was looking down by the water than up here. So I'm looking forward to on the way back, me being closer to the water and seeing if I can find some more good jade. So we have turned around and heading back. We're gonna pick up those two uh, bigger rocks that we set aside on the way back. I'm gonna hit the water's edge. Dana's gonna be sort of halfway between where her and I walked the first time and see if we can find something. Ah! Ah! One problem with walking this way is my shadow is right where I want to look. I have to look off to the side of my shadow because I can't really see in my shadow all that well. What another beautiful winter's day. It's still the middle of March. Spring is a couple days away, but it's still technically winter. And it is gorgeous out here. 
There's a piece of model jade. That's the stuff that oxidizes yellow. And that piece is way too big for us to carry out of here. But what a nice piece that is. Maybe someday I'll enlist the boys with a sling or something and we'll come down and get that out of here. Because right now I can't touch that thing. Whew, my backpack's already full. Dana's carrying one of the big ones. Oh, she's carried it over to the other big one. One under each arm! <laughs> If anyone watching is not familiar with this channel, um, the reason I'm making my wife do all the heavy lifting today is I am just about three to four months out of open heart surgery and my chest isn't healing all that well, so I can't do any really heavy lifting at the moment. So my little wife is doing all the heavy lifting. If there's any really heavy stuff, I got a bunch, I got a couple friends that are you know, big beefy guys. They'll come and uh, carry it out for me. But today, putting Dana through the paces, seeing what she can do with her big muscles. <laughs> How about that one? That's got to weigh 200 pounds or more. More of the black nephrite. Got to find ones that we can actually lift. I bet you right now Dana is wishing I hunted exotic feathers rather than stones. I have a feeling she's cursing me a little bit. I better go help. Here is a great example of the pinging sound you might hear when you tap a piece of jade. Sounds like a piece of glass you're hitting. That is a piece of black nephrite right there. Nice, nice palm sized piece. And more black nephrite. And another nice piece of model jade. Look how shiny it is compared to the rest of the rocks. Ah, oh, I can't get it out. And then you can see the modeledness on this one. Every one of those darker spots is really translucent green once it's cut. That's one for us to take. Whoa, what's that? I have no idea. Look at that thing. It's spectacular. And it's obviously big. It's not jade. I don't know what it is, but it's a neat looking rock. There is a beauty. It might be too heavy for my backpack and Dana's not here to help me. There's a little piece of model jade beside it, but that's the beaut. Again, when I bring the guys, we can get that out of here. For now, I'll take that. I'm down amongst the big boys now. There's a big one. There's a big, big model jade. Unfortunately, these big guys are just too difficult to deal with at the moment. Even though they would be giving me lots of great material, I just can't deal with them. Right now, I need ones that I can lift, because those I can't lift. Well, I think Dana found something she likes. <laughs> Look at that piece of model jade. That's a big one. You can see the modeling all through it. And now it goes down. Yeah, now it goes down, because that's really heavy. Noise. Tingy, yeah, that's that metal ping, yeah. It's jade. We think we found a piece of mutton fat. Mutton fat jade. We see the pockets in it showing the inclusions. Uh, let's see if it's big enough or small enough to lift. For some reason, the mutton fat's always big. She's a big one. Okay, well, I found another piece that I think I'll show Dana. I think we're gonna take the feather and wedge to it, see if we can break off a chunk to take home. <laughs> Tool of choice, rock. And more mutton fat. Oh, Dana's got something. Oh, sounds right. Very green, but that's that ultramafic rock. So here's another awesome piece of mutton fat jade. You can really see the blues and greens in some of the inclusions on this one. There's lots of it. It is a perfect, perfect piece. So, way too big for me to carry. I brought up the hammer drill, drill bits, feather and wedges. I'm gonna put two feather and wedges in there and see if I can knock off the front point. Wish me luck. This could be hard to drill. This stuff is tough. Well, there you go. That answers my question about how hard mutton fat jade is. First drill bit shattered before I was a quarter inch deep. Second drill bit shattered at about a half inch deep. Maybe I'll get the close up and show you what happened to my drill bits, but they're just destroyed. Two of them, and I only brought two with me today. So these are carbide drill bits that have drilled hundreds of holes in ocean picture stone for me, and one hole in mutton fat absolutely destroyed them. Might need the diamond saw out here to get that rock. Not gonna do it with the feather and wedges. 
these are not free, I don't want to wreck any more of them. Whoa, that sun's bright. It is a beautiful day out here. But I'm not gonna end the video here because I want you to see what this stuff looks like when it's cut and slabbed. So let's go back to the shop and check it out. See you there in a sec. at the Vernon Lapidary Association's workshop to cut some of that jade and start testing it to see if it's serpentine jade or that ultra mafic stone. I've got a few cuts done already, but just gonna show you the shop first. So Dana's over there cutting some of our ocean picture stone at the moment. We got Steve and Dawn over there making cabochons. And I've got all the saws running cutting jade. Now we did go back three more, two more times, three times in total collecting jade, and we got quite a bit. We got all sorts of great stuff. You can see I've cut some of it already. I will show you the cut pieces and testing it in a second. But we did find one piece of mutton fat jade that was uh, small enough for us to carry out. We've slabbed that one already. Beautiful stone. Uh, you can see I've cut the ends off a few of them already. Everything so far is looking like jade nicely. I haven't scratched much of it yet to see what it is, to see if it's serpentine, but I'll do that on camera in just a second. That's not all of it either. There's a bunch more in the backseat of my truck. Beautiful stones. Not quite done yet. A little bit more. So here's my plan with most of these rocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a capstone off the end. Then I'm going to cut a 1 8 inch slab out of the middle and I'm going to pass light through it to see how much light is reflected or is passed through the stone. And then we can, we can tell sort of the quality of the jade and then I'm probably going to put the whole stone up for sale as is. Some of my stones I plan to actually cut down into one pound pieces so that I can sell them as you know a one pound of jade but most of them will be the full stone. Let's go look at that slab. Look at that. And now we have to do a scratch test to see if it is serpentine or jade. Okay, so if you scratch it, you notice it leaves a line. That's a line of metal wearing off my knife. Rub it, there is no mark in the surface. That's harder than the knife is. The knife is a 5.5 hardness, jade is a six. So six is harder than 5.5. It should just leave a mark of metal on the surface. Be very careful when doing a test like this. This is a sharp knife. You don't want to slip and start looking for your body parts laying on the ground. Very hard, nice jade. So it's definitely a beautiful forest green jade, passes light through nicely, even one really extraordinary seam going through it. I like that. So that stone will be sold as is and is a beautiful piece of Fraser River jade. Now here is a chunk, a beautiful chunk, absolutely beautiful forest green, it's awesome. But this is that ultra mafic rock. It is not translucent at all. No matter how hard I try to make the Olight pass through it from underneath, absolutely no light passes through this stone. It's a gorgeous green stone, but it's an ultra mafic rock, it is not jade. Can't win them all, there's one that won't be sold as jade. I don't know what I'll do with it though. Anyone want this stone? Look at the coloration of that stone. That is amazing. Passes light beautifully and is hard, hard, hard. Nice piece of model jade. I'm liking it. Now here's a great piece. Nice forest green, beautifully translucent, but let's give it a scratch test and see what happens. Wipe it off, and what happens? What do you see? The scratch is into the surface. That there 
is serpentine. The scratch is left behind. So serpentine is a beautiful, beautiful stone. It looks very similar to jade, almost the same kind of, you know, look as jade. But it is soft. That's the biggest difference there. So there's a piece of jade and a piece of serpentine. I do sell serpentine on my website as well as the jade. Uh, but the jade is really the nice stuff to work with. Another piece of Ultra Mafic that fooled me. No light passes through the slabs of it. Wow, that is a beautiful piece of jade. I haven't cut the slab yet from that one to see how much light passes through. But look at the coloration there. Whoa. I'm happy with that one. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece down into two. And those will be two one pound pieces that will sell as, you know, one pound premium Fraser River Jade. Here's the next one. Scratch test shows it to be very, very hard. And wait till you see the light that goes through it. Wow. That is a great little piece of rock. Again, those will be sold as a unit, as one. And um, that is just an outstanding little rock. This one I'm not going to cut. You can see from the surface that that is the same as that high, high, high quality Fraser River Jade. And that's a perfect, you know, palm stone that I can't come to bring myself to cut. I'm leaving that one as is and selling as is premium. I am so happy with this jade. It's coming out way better than I expected. Some of the modeled pieces um, I'm not liking as much. So I'm going to have to definitely check those and make sure I only use the ones that I really like from the model jade. That one's got pockets of jade through it, but just not nearly enough. Another amazing piece. What an absolute mess I'm making today. I love it. I've got some beautiful jade pieces. Absolutely amazing. The mutton fat came out so nice. Um, I had a lot that came out kind of low quality, but uh, hey, you can't win them all, right? I'm going to have all of this stuff up for sale on my website, www.danherdprospecting.com, including all those once I get them cut. I didn't get them all cut today, but there is some nice pieces of jade here. The best jade I did find was the stuff that obviously looked like jade from the outside surface. What a hoot I'm having finding jade. I'm loving this. I kind of ended up with, you know, uh, two or three pieces of serpentine. I probably a no eight to ten pieces of just mafic or ultra mafic rocks just nothing rocks and then dozens of pieces of jade you know originally i was let's take this thing off oh there we go you know originally i was a gold prospector but i'm really loving this rock this lapidary rock stuff ocean picture stone jade uh we're still on hunt for road night i'm really having fun prospecting for other things other than gold though gold is still in my future I'll be up at my dream claim in a week's time. And ho, 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 we plan to find some nuggets up there this time. I'm gonna go back in the shop and get back to work. I'm gonna show you pictures of everything right here. Look at this one with just sunlight behind it. Wow, that's amazing. Hope everyone enjoyed my adventures in jade hunting. Again, if you'd like to buy some of my jade, I do sell it on my website, www.danherdprospecting.com. Thanks everyone for watching and a big, big thanks to my patrons out there. Because of your support, I can offer these weekly episodes of Dan Herd Prospecting. If you'd like to learn how to support my channel, you can head off to www.patreon.com slash danherd. Hope everyone's having an amazing day. Look at this sunshine. Isn't this great? I sure have an amazing day. And until the next video, everyone, bye.